Hello everyone, Shua Legra here, and I am introducing you to my new and old friends. Uh, today I have a new friend with me, and her name is Kathleen. I'll let her uh, introduce herself and let us know a little bit about who she is and what she does. Good morning, everyone. I am Kathleen Herod, and I am a conscious coach and Arthur. I am also a wife, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> So I, I want you, I, I know, I'm sure many people have not heard the term conscious coach yet. Uh, so I want you to explain a little bit, what, the, what is that? What does that look like? Uh, so basically a conscious coach is, my job is to bring you to a conscious awareness or an awareness level. And so basically I help people to critically think, to have, to have a, uh, a way of thinking through the process. So a conscious mind simply means you have developed the ability to critically think, and that's the skill that you need, regardless in any moment, regardless to the pressure, the influence, or persons involved. And mm -hmm. so that's what I want you to be able to do, to just have a conscious mind, to be able to always be able to apply a thought process, meaning you're thinking short term, you're thinking long term, and you know what you're doing, and that's the choice you want to make. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that you right. You definitely need to have a conscious mind anytime, every time, right? No matter right. who's there. Um, so yeah, thank you. And that's, I think there's not many of you out there. There are not many people doing that kind of a niche in coaching. So that's really, really good. Thank yeah. you. So what is your backstory? Like how did you become a conscious coach? And what led to this? Well, so basically I've always been the go-to person, right? I've always been the person that people have come came to with their with their concerns, with their story, um, you know, in a moment of, of confusion, just wanting a little bit of clarity. Uh, and so I found myself to always be that person, to be there to help those in need. And so I kind of turned that passion into a str uh, tr strategic tool that I could use to help people facilitate their life and go through thought, actual thought processes. Mm -hmm. Because I found out that a lot of people have feelings, they have a, a lot of emotion, a lot of feelings, but they're really not thinking through the facts and the outcome and what the results will be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so true. And, and I think many, you're right, like a lot of us, especially when we go through hardship, you no know, difficulties, anything that's challenging, emotions are high right and it's so easy right. to act on emotion and not you know do kind of that critical thinking you know that you help people do so that is a skill that's needed and also a reminder even for those of us who think that we you know we are we think critically it's always a good reminder to like when you are in a crisis when you are in a challenge you know take the time to process your emotion right make space for that but then don't right. always decide from your emotion yeah. exactly exactly and that's what that's what i try to coach people on because like you said as we go through experiences mm -hmm. we have these feelings we have these these emotions um but we're really not processing we're really not processing it out and it's, it's pretty much like a, a skill that we've never had the privilege of having because mm -hmm. being the descendants of slavery uh, we've been taught to do what the master says. We've been taught to do what the whip says. And we haven't even had a chance to, to think because we've been on this treadmill of survival. And so we haven't had a, an opportunity to, as families, uh, uh, to sit down and to, and to really guide and lead and mm -hmm. to teach these skills. And so that's what I want to bring back to families. That's what I want to bring back uh, to women, to children, to men. I want us to take that, that time, take that space, and to slow down the emotions, calm all that down, and really think about creating a pathway for your life. So you'll get the results out of life that you desire, and not be so emotionally triggered, and continue to have behaviors that will get you uh, results that you, you, you don't want to have, you know, cause you financial hardship, uh, add more stress to your life. So we don't want to be making decisions out of our emotion. We want to be making really good decisions that we really thought out and, and for things that we really plan for our lives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well said. And, and, I, and I think people don't always consider 
how you know history impacts their thinking right and it, right. you know and it's like all the things that you know or gen past generations been through impact how we are thinking and living and reacting today and you know and it, unless we start creating new patterns in our homes like you said you know teaching those things at the nuclear level at family level so that our kids learn to think for themselves that we, as we are learning to think for ourselves and often i also find that not just you know for those of us who identify as black but even for women especially in general we have so been learned and trained to always um kind of depend on someone else that we don't always think for ourselves so that's you know that's something that we have to again be mindful of because you have your own mind god gave you a mind for a reason you know and you know as, as you as you create this new life um that you are called to live, you have to be intentional about um, using your mind to create, so to kind of set that trajectory and not just, you know, going through the motions or not just living at what someone, someone else's expectations. Exactly. And you know what? The reason why I wrote this book and every book that I write mm -hmm. is to set the expectation, right? Um, one benefit that the privileged have is to they've had the time they they haven't had our struggle right they don't have to and and of course they've created our struggle but um they have the time to set the expectation right because they're not in they're not in survival mode mm -hmm. and i write our books for us specifically because we don't have the tools that we need to facilitate a higher expectation in life and mm -hmm. so we keep wondering why why do i keep why do we keep coming to this outcome, not realizing that we're in a system, we've been taught a system, and we have not created in our own homes a critical thinking pattern uh, because we, we really haven't been allowed that because we've, we've been in survival mode for so long. And so what I really wanted to do was give us an easy to use tool to actually help us to create those expectations and to uh, be able to form those projections and trajectories with our children. I want our children, and I'm a minister as, as well, I want our children to be able to have their build and create their own prophecies for their lives. You understand, like, we don't have that benefit. And I want us to just slow down, <laughs> start to think, get out of our emotional seat, and really start to build and create these expectations because mm -hmm. as i listen to i you know I, I i'm very i like to look at stats and numbers and read reports and all of that and i'm hearing all of this uh the reports about you know numbers black people are uh you know they're they're poor black people are um they don't have the the background the education black children are struggling in school black mm -hmm. why though mm -hmm. why because we have to understand that we don't have the tools to set expectations. And if you don't have the tools to set expectations, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you going to build? You, you know, the Bible says, and I say I'm a minister, mm -hmm. without the vision, you're going to die. You're going to perish. You're going to keep running into poverty. You're going to keep having these struggle stories, which I talk about in this particular book. Um, so you think you, you want to have sex. Um, and so I don't want us to keep having these struggle stories, but in order for us to not have them, we have to understand what we need to do versus what we're experiencing, uh, versus what we've been experiencing, how to turn that thing around. Yes, yes. Oh, so well said. So, and you kind of dig a little bit in, into that why, you know, why you're doing all of this. And I guess that at the end of the day, why are you still doing it? Because you've been doing this for a while and, it, it, and it's needed. And I get that. Like, what motivates you to keep going, especially in the, um, you know, in the current atmosphere and in, in this, in, in, in the struggle, if you want, not in the struggle, like it's, it's a cause that is, um, that weighs on all of us. You know, it's not an easy thing to do, and it's not the prettiest thing to do, right? <laughs> so, right, know, at right. the end of the day, what helps you keep going? That what put, that keeps you uh, moving forward and, and staying in this field and doing what you do? So, what helps me to keep going is, again, I see that we don't have the tools that we need. Mm -hmm. I see that. You can tell me every day, oh, you're, you're down, you're poor, you don't have this and you don't have that. And what I really don't like is 
they, you know, no one provides the tools for you to become the fisherman, right? Mm -hmm. To catch your own fish, to build your own wealth. What they do is they just continue to feed you whatever they want to feed you. And so I want us to become empowered, to become the leaders, to become the fishermen of our own homes in our own community so that we can, can begin to minister or feed our people the things that they need. Uh, and that drives me every day. When, I, when I'm in school, because I'm a substitute teacher, my first degree, associate's degree was in, edu uh, in education. And so when I'm in these schools and I see that black children are disproportionately affected by their home environment, their community, and again, I won't get into all the, um, uh, the residual of slavery, but when I see that we've been built into a system that will not create an opportunity for us to become critical thinkers, I then have to create something to help. Because when I see students um, at school getting in trouble repeatedly over and over again, uh, because they haven't learned how to not be emotional, but to just take the time to you know, uh, uh, decompress, uh, de-escalate themselves to just calm down and think about what are the choices that I'm, what are the choices that I'm making right now and how are they going to benefit me? So until I see us win, I will be uh, doing the work that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for all the work that you do and you are helping so many. And I wanted to ask you here in closing, um, how can we support you? So again, I'm, I keep mentioning this book, um, So You Think You Want to Have Sex. If I have time, I just want to drop a, a few truths about this book. I'll show it to you here. This is the book, So You Think You Want to Have Sex. The reason why I wrote the book is because African-American high school students are number one rated for sexual behavior, for sexual intercourse. It means our children are, are, are having more sex than any other race. Why is that important? It's important because if we want to build our economic base, we cannot be the ones who add stress and early uh, childhood births and all of this to our teens. And so though it's a lot of things that we need to talk about. We need to help them set uh, projections. We need to help, help them build a plan for their life. We need to create bonds with our children. A lot of people think because um, they buy things and do all of that, they're creating these bonds and, they're, and you're not, you're not. And so it's just, you know, so the book, So You Think You Want to Have Sex, I wrote it because of that to help the parents. And uh, so basically you can reach out to me. I'm on Facebook as The Conscious Coach. Uh, I'm on Instagram as The Conscious Coach. And I am on YouTube as The Conscious Coach. So if you want to reach out to me, you can email me at kharrod at gmail.com because I forget my conscious coach. I think it's info at khconsciouscoach.org if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I do have a webpage. It's khconsciouscoach.org and you can visit that webpage. And here's a good thing I have. Along with this book, you will also be able to go to my Conscious Academy. And so with each chapter, we're, I'm going to have live discussions because this book launches um, July the 20th. Okay. So I'll have live discussions on that in that academy. So guys, just hang in there with me and we'll be on this journey together, okay? <laughs> well, thank you so much for everyone. We'll drop the link so we can follow her and uh, join the group and continue to support her in that way. Again, thank, thank you so you. much for being here today. Thank you so no, much for thank all that thank you do you. and sharing um, your why and your back and your backstory with the rest of us. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And uh, hey, guys, follow me. And I can't wait to, for us to get on this journey. Yes. <laughs>